Hello everybody. So the topic this week is pruning. So why do we actually care about pruning trees? Well, uh, if you if you uh, go around Bakersfield enough, you'd kind of uh, be asking yourself that question all the time because there's a lot of improper pruning te uh, techniques done around town. But the reason we uh, as arborists will care about pruning is because it's the most common maintenance procedure and the biggest thing is that if you do improper pruning it can actually damage the tree for life. There's a um, best practice best management practices manual um, put out by ISA that has uh, lots of these guidelines but we'll go over uh, some specifics about pruning. And if you want a quick um, refresher about the stuff that we're about to cover you can press pause right now and click on the link below. So the, one of the first things you really have to establish when we're talking about pruning is the idea of why are you pruning, which honestly, for anything that you do, you should be saying, why am I doing this before you do it to make sure that you do it right. No branch should be removed without any clear cut objectives and removing the correct stems is just as important as making the correct cuts. What does that mean? It means that it's just as important that you cut the right things as the way that you cut those things. So just because I cut it, made a perfect cut here and cut it exactly where I'm supposed to cut it, if it's not the right branch, we still damage the tree. It's got, you've got to cut the right branches and cut the right branches in the right manner. Um, what are some objectives for pruning? You can reduce the potential for tree or branch failure. You can provide clearance. You can reduce shade and wind resistance. You can maintain health. You can influence fruit or flower production. And you can improve your view or the aesthetics of the tree, um, if it, especially uh, if we're just talking about something that's put out um, for landscaping. So let's kind of go over the biology of pruning. Uh, I guess that's a good way to put it. The biology of pruning. So if we really talk about branch attachment, we're focused on uh, the, er the area called the branch collar. And that's an area where you get overlapping um, wood from both the, um, the branch and the trunk. And so if you look at this picture here, right here, we've got the branch collar, this area that we're talking about right here, where you get the overlapping wood from the branch and the trunk and this this overlapping wood is fantastic because in this overlapping wood we get a branch protection zone and that and in that zone you have physical and chemical properties that are going to slow the spread of decay so if we leave the branch collar when we make our cuts that's going to allow the tree to heal up quicker which is exactly what we want um, and why why this is extremely important in terms of pruning is that if you have a, a co-dominant stem, so you don't have one dominant stem, you have multiple dominant stems on your tree, they're gonna lack um, they're gonna lack this branch collar. And not only are they gonna lack branch collar, but they're gonna have what's called included bark instead. And included bark is bark that gets enclosed in the crotch that's going to to weaken the union. And so they actually, if you have codominant stems and you have the same looking situation, you have included bark instead, and it's actually weakening the union of the of the stems more than it's actually helping. And so it's really important um, to understand the branch collar and what it looks like and where it is so that we can cut outside of that. So we leave that extra special protection zone that the tree has already set up for itself. And that leads us to the idea of compartmentalization. And so what compartmentalization is, is the natural process of defense in trees by which they wall off decay in the wood. And so you can see right here in the picture on the left, we've got our branch collar right there. We've got our bark ridge. And we're going to make sure that we do our cut outside of that because then it walls off very easily. And this is a, this is a branch one year later here on the right and that is a perfectly fine wound it's all healed up there's nothing no signs of infection and no disease getting in there and that's what we we like so trees have this natural process of compartmentalization um, ready to go if um, if it's got a nice branch collar and formed in the correct way 
If it hasn't, then that's another reason why we can be doing pruning in order to actually um, make that process happen. So another look at it. So here's our branch bark ridge over here. Here's our branch collar. And so we want to be doing, anytime we do cuts, we'd want to be cutting outside of this branch collar because we want to leave this here because in here is our bark protection zone where we get that, um, we'll get that nice uh, compartmentalization happening. So in terms of pruning cuts, we can do a few different pruning cuts. So We'll go over thinning, reduction, heading, and the three cut method. So first, thinning cuts. The um, thinning cuts are, are preferred, are kind of the normal cut or the preferred cut because it most closely simulates where branches actually norm naturally shed um, off of off of a tree or off the stem. Um, it's it's when you you prune back to the parent branch or trunk so if it's a smaller limb you'd be cutting it back to the parent branch or if it's a, a branch off of the uh, main trunk of the tree you'd be cutting it back to the trunk and you want to cut like we just said just outside of the branch collar so here's a look at it so here's our branch collar here's our cut line so you want to be cutting outside of that and you can also see the difference especially in a tree like this where you can see that difference in the in the bark itself to kind of give you an idea of what the what's branch collar and then what's actually um, where we should be cutting another look at it on a different tree over here um, we want to cut just outside of the swelling collar and you want um, it's okay to leave like a little um, a little stub when you flush cut the tree, you actually leave a big gaping open wound that's much harder for the tree to close. And then um, especially uh, younger trees, you probably get away with it. But older mature trees, they start um, losing the ability to take that stored energy and, and close up those wounds. And they start becoming um, really open to, to pest problems and disease if you, if you leave like a flush cut big open wound. The, the farther out we cut like this, the smaller the wound's going to be, but we don't really want to leave like a big huge nub. We're just going to leave a little, little nub. A reduction cut. Uh, we're trying to reduce the length of a limb, so we're going to cut it back to a lateral branch. So if we look at this picture here on the right, so it says we're going to cut A here. We're going to take that off. And then we're going to leave B here. And if you look at the actual tree, so we're looking at this area right here as one of them, we're going to cut everything up here, all this dotted or dashed uh, area right here. We're going to cut that off, but we're going to leave this guy here. So that guy, eventually what we're thinking is going to say, oh, there's nothing here. And he's going to, he, he's going to kind of go like that. And then same thing here. So we're going to cut all this back down and let one of these other smaller lateral branches come and take the place of all these other ones that we're going to cut out and so it's just another it's it's another way to do it um still kind of focused on the idea of the smaller the cut uh the better the wound closure is going to be and it's really it's just the idea of reducing the length of a limb like if we look at this tree right here this this limb was kind of out of control a little bit when you look at it in terms of the length of the other one. So we cut it to try and give our tree a nice good structure to it. In terms of a heading cut, a heading cut can be both a, a good and bad technique. Most of the time I hear of a heading cut, I hear of topping. Topping being a bad thing. Topping is when you cut a tree back down to a predetermined crown limit or basically you just you you a tree got too tall and you're just going to cut it off and just um stunt it basically um but topping is is terrible because it can lead to dieback decay and unstable sprout production so we really want to avoid topping so that being said can you do a heading cut that isn't topping you can um and then a, so our definition of a heading cut would be cutting the limbs to a stub bud or a lateral branch that is not large enough to assume uh, apical dominance. And really where we see this um, 
see heading cuts used in a positive way is on small plants or shrubs to stimulate more branching. And in that case, a heading cut has a proper use, but we really want to avoid topping trees. If we're going to Basically, you got to think about it. We've talked a lot uh, in these lectures so far about um, site and species relationships. So, you know, if what would be a situation I'd have a, to top a tree? Well, um, when I lived in Georgia, there was one specific uh, instance where they planted a sycamore tree. It grows to 60, 80, 60, 70 feet tall, and they planted it under, um, you know, 25 foot power lines. And eventually, because sycamore trees go really fast, it grew up and it started getting close to the lines and they had to, and they just topped it instead. And so right there, you know, the topping worked for them. Sure. But wouldn't it have made more sense to plant a, you know, 20 foot tall tree under the 25 foot power lines, as opposed to a tree that was going to be 70 feet tall and fast growing underneath the power lines. I think it's much better if we just get to that idea of sight site and species uh, relationships more than having to worry about whether we're going to top trees or not. So just kind of a look here on this tree. Um, the idea of if we were kind of, um, you don't have to necessarily think of these uh, cuts as all being um, separate. Like I'm only going to do reduction cuts or I'm only going to do heading cuts or I'm only going to do removal cuts. You can do all those cuts in the same tree and and, and um, even maybe even in this case uh, in on the same branch over time. It just uh, depends on, on what you need. And so here this would be a reduction cut up there down below here. We'd have a heading cut if we were to leave a, um, you know, some sort of a stub here. And then if we wanted to just get rid of the whole branch, we would do a removal cut um, down there, just making sure we leave a little bit of that um, branch collar uh, up there. And so you can, you can do all of these things together. You can do them in the same tree. You can do multiple versions of those. They're just different types of cuts and, and what you have to do to make them properly. Uh, if we have a large limb, um, and especially if we're pruning branches with a saw, we want to use the three-cut method. So the three-cut method would be that we do an undercut about one or two feet out from the branch um, or trunk. Then we're going to do a top cut a little bit slightly farther out than our undercut. And then we're going to remove the stub with that big final flush cut. Um, probably which should be if we're doing it correctly just outside of the branch collar and those two cuts will um, Give us some some leeway to, to let our branch come down nice and easy without um, Really pulling on the on the trunk or the branch and you know causing more of a ripping motion We want a nice clean flush cut and so Using the three cut method really helps us get to that idea of a flush cut In, the, in this chapter, we also talk about the idea of structural pruning. And structural pruning um, can be extremely beneficial if done correctly. So you're, what you're doing in structural pruning is just training the tree to promote good structure. So we want to remove def defects. We want to establish a dominant, one dominant leader, and we want to select branches that will be well-spaced. In other words, we just want to make our trees as aesthetically pleasing as possible while also benefiting the tree. Um, we, this, if you do structural pruning correctly, it can lead to young trees that are going to have less structural defects and require less maintenance as they age. And I think kind of everybody who has trees wants, wants to have that. And so just taking a look here at the, uh, capital city, uh, tree experts, their version of it. So you, this is their never prune tree. You can see at planting after three years, after seven years, and 15 years after planting, and then 30 years after planting, where you're going to need very large cuts, which are going to be very costly and, um, and not easy to do. Whereas if we did structural pruning at the beginning, and then after three years, after seven years, after 15 years, and 30 years, now we only need small cuts at the end, just minor pruning, sort of thing as opposed to big major pruning and we've got a much better looking tree which I think everybody really 
wants when they plant a tree. They they want the tree to just grow up and be pretty, but it actually sometimes takes a little bit of work. So we have five steps in the structural pruning process. So the first one, you're going to remove any broken, dead, dying, or damaged branches. You're going to select and establish your structure. And um, this is the point where you really focus on that um, establishing that dominant leader if you don't have one. If you have one, then just the idea of are we going for, you know, like a wide spreading crown? Are we going for more of a, a conical shape to our tree? You're going to establish the structure that you want. You're going to select and establish the lowest permanent branch. And so... Um, what we're saying is this is this is the the lowest uh, permanent branch is going to go. Anything below this, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of. Um, and just a, a rule of thumb for that is it should be less than half the diameter of the trunk at attachment. So wherever it attaches to the tree, you want to have a branch that's less um, the 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 diameter of the of the branch should be less than half the diameter of the tree trunk because that way we just know it's going to be small enough that the that the trunk can support it well if it's if it's really big if it's got a big diameter um compared to the tree trunk the tree might have issues holding that branch up um, one instance that comes into mind is just thinking about um like live oak trees that end up having just really huge um, branches that um, you really have to make sure that that the that you have a trunk that's going to be strong enough to support that. Step four, you're going to uh, select and establish your scaffold branches. So the idea that we want branches to be uh, spread out and uh, and spread out enough from each other that there's basically room to grow and room to spread out and room to put out leaves and be able to get light and sun and be able to have a nice um, well-functioning tree. And the last step is going to be the process of selection and subordination of temporary branches. And these are the ones that aren't, um, they're, they're not, we're going to leave them out there because we're going to need, um, we're, we're still going to need a lot of material to do photosynthesis to make sure that our trees grow, but eventually we know we're going to get rid of these ones because they're, um, there's just too many uh, branches and we, we want to make sure that we have a nice beautiful tree but we're going to use these ones for a little bit take advantage of their photosynthetic capability and then we're going to get rid of them and so here's uh here's a look at it our our five steps of structural pruning so we're going to remove any dead broken or crossing branches water sprouts or suckers so right here there's a there's a crossing branch this branch right here we're going to get rid of that there's a dead branch right here, so we're going to get rid of that. And we've got a sucker down here on our roots, so we're going to get rid of all those. Number two, we're going to select a single trunk to establish as the leader. So we want it to be this one. So this other guy that's kind of in the way, this competing branch, we're going to get rid of that one. Um, usually we want the tallest, straightest, and healthiest stem. Um, number three, we're going to determine how much clearance you'll eventually need under your tree. So um, branches should be elevated 8 feet above sidewalks and 14 feet above streets, at least uh, uh, in the city of Sacramento, which is where I got this, um, this uh, um, figure from. And so um, eight, 8 feet is pretty, uh, pretty standard in terms of sidewalks. Uh, so if we're, if we're looking at that, you know, we don't see any of those here because we really got to let this thing kind of grow up before we really um, start seeing um, what, which ones we, we want to cut down and where we really want our lowest um, permanent branches to be. But you really want to see what you want to establish um, as, your, as your lowest permanent branches. And it looks like probably right here is what they're going for in terms of their lowest permanent branches because number four here, it says all branches below our lowest permanent branch are our temporary branches. So we're going to keep those on for a little bit, but then we're going to eventually get rid of those. And, and then we're going to have the, the structure of the tree that we're looking for. And then they also um, say select and establish side branches growing from the central leader that are well spaced and vertically staggered evenly around the trunk. And so this is talking um, about back, um, in the steps we had before about those scaffolding branches and we really want to have um, this nice look where we kind of can stair step our way 
up the stem in terms of our branches. So in terms of pruning mature trees, uh, the big thing we want to remember with pruning mature trees is we never want to take uh, more than a quarter of the tree's leaf-bearing canopy in a given year. Um, so never want to do more than one quarter. And really you don't want to approach even approach that number because you could be um, putting the tree at risk. So you, you never want to go more than a quarter of the tree's leaf-bearing canopy. So we've got multiple pruning methods as well that we'll cover. So we're going to cover crown cleaning, crown thinning, reduction, raising, restoration, and utility pruning. So let's dive in. So with crown cleaning, this is your selective removal of dead, diseased, broken, and or weakly attached branches from the tree crown. And this is going to be your just your most common pruning technique. Uh, for landscape trees. For crown thinning, you're going to do a crown cleaning, so you're all you're going to get rid of all the dead, dying, um, weakly attached branches, but then you're also going to selectively remove um, branches to increase light penetration and air movement through the crown. So if we take a look at this picture here, you can see a real thick crown. Um, can't really see much through it at all. But then we're going to do a little bit of the thinning where we take out a few branches here or there and really improve that light, uh, light penetration into the crown, really improve that air movement through the, through the crown. Really important though, we don't want to over thin because we don't want to get water sprouts or suckers. And so if we're talking about water sprouts and suckers, see all these little thin spindly things popping up here? in this tree like that and that and that and that so that's a sign of over thinning a tree so you get all these water sprouts and you get these suckers popping up so you want to avoid having that happen so you really want to make sure that you do not um, over over thin your trees in terms of a crown reduction that's going to be used to reduce the size of the tree and you're, you're going to basically cut the limbs back to their point of origin. So you can see in this picture here of this canopy reduction, there's our full big canopy. We instead want to cut it back to here. So we're just going to cut uh, out there and kind of reduce some of these limbs. Like you can see right here, this one and this one, we're just going to reduce it kind of back to the point of origin and cut, cut our can or really reduce our canopy down. So for, uh, for crown raising, we're going, to, um, we're going to remove the lower branches to provide clearance. Here we can't see the stop sign, so we're going to raise it up so that we've got nice clearance. Um, like I mentioned uh, before, the city of Sacramento had some pretty standard numbers, which were the um, 8 feet uh, clearance above sidewalks and 14 feet clearance above streets. Um, that's that's pretty standard um, to make sure that you know you got clearance for all sorts of cars and trucks and then you've got uh, clearance for for people walking with crown restoration that's our selective removal of some water sprouts stubs and dead branches to improve a tree structure and form but this this sort of um, pruning method is going to require several prunings over a number of years because it's not um, because if, if we're restoring a crown that's already been screwed up, it's going to take a little bit um, to, to really get it to form and shape the way you want. You can't just fix it in one go around because you'd have to remove so much material. And we know we don't want to remove more than a quarter of the tree's um, leaf growing material in a year. So it, it's, it's something that's going to require several prunings over a number of years to get it back in the right order. So here's um, kind of a look at all of the different things. So here's our tree before. We're going to clean it out, get rid of you know some of the bad stems or broken stems. We're going to thin it and kind of open it up. We might want to raise it up as well. We might then have to reduce it in terms of um, all around uh, to, to bring them back. And then in, in we'll talk about this in a little bit, but there's also instances of, of uh, specific instances of pollarding. So utility pruning, 
our last of our pruning methods, is the removal of branches or stems to prevent the loss of service, prevent damage to equipment, to provide access to utility workers, and uphold uh, the intended usage of utility facilities. So specific to the idea of utilities like like power lines and um, and those telephone poles and those sorts of um, of utility interests, how how we prune um, specifically in those instances uh, might be slightly different from the way we normally do it because we've got to work around um, those those specific things and um, because of especially things with working with power lines because of the um, the possible uh, cat catastrophic um, levels involved uh, with with um, that sort of equipment. You really want to make sure that everything's done right and everything's done in a way that um, we don't have to continually uh, do a lot of maintenance or do a lot of work to where it can become um, problematic. So here's some examples that you don't don't normally sleep, see in terms of our um, other pruning side pruning, uh, slope pruning, V pruning, and crown reduction. Um, you know, not a lot of these aren't really our preferred methods because we want beautiful, um, beautiful, aesthetically pleasing trees, and not, none of these really um, you know fit into that category. But because of the um, the need for the utilities, we really have to just kind of uh, do what we need to in these specific instances. There are some uh, specialty prunings. So you've got palms, um, which can hold several years of dead fronds, which can be hundreds of pounds. And just a quick side story. My my mother-in-law loves to tell a story about how uh, she was walking um, my my wife and her sister in uh, in a baby carriage, and a palm frond just came down on top of the baby carriage, and and she freaked out and. Um, she finally got the material off of the baby carriage and both of the babies were just sitting there fine and laughing and having a great time. But it can be scary because it can be like hundreds of pounds of material falling out of the, the palm tree. And depending on whether we're talking about just um, the dead palm fronds or whether we're talking about um, fruits as well, um, it could be, it could be um, quite a dangerous situation because you know, palms do grow very tall and, and that material is heavy. Uh, when we're removing the palm fronds, we want to remove from the top down and we only want to remove palm, palm fronds that are below horizontal. And so what do we mean by that? Well, if we think about horizontal just being the limbs that are coming straight out, anything below straight out, anything that's kind of drooping down below straight out, those are the ones we want to take. We don't want to take anything else. Espalier is a combination of pruning and training branches along a wall, a fence, or a trellis. And then pollarding, which we discussed um, just a couple slides ago, that's a training system where you do a severe heading followed by annual spout removal to keep large trees growing to a modest size. And you um, basically cut trees down to, um, to a knoll or a, a knuckle or um, you just you cut it down to to almost you don't want to call it a stump but it's like a it's like a knoll or a knuckle and then and then you just kind of keep it it keep it um, back to that so here's some examples of our specialty um, specialty pruning so here's a palm tree before on the left and a palm tree uh, after on the right and you can see basically it's all these ones below horizontal all of this here and all of that here that's what we were looking to get rid of because you can see these ones come out above horizontal. So we didn't want to cut those. We just wanted to cut um, what was down below. Espalier. So here is our stem. And then we are training um, the branches to grow along this, this fence here. And it's very common, as you can see right here, in fruit trees. And it's a, it's a common technique uh, done in, in fruit trees when you have um, not a lot of space. Here's an example of pollarding on a on a lime tree, and um, here's our here's kind of our look um, at at um, what happens during pollarding. So this is the new growth that you'd get. Um, it shows you what the natural shape of the tree would be, but where they've cut it back to. Um, and then so you know it's a 
it's a different way of doing things. Pollarding just isn't my my favorite. Um, you see uh, crate myrtles a lot. You see the um, pollarded look to uh, to crate myrtles, and it's just not not my favorite look. But you know, everybody's got their own their own thing. So in terms of timing, when can we um, when can we prune? Most routine pruning can be done any time. If you want to maximize growth, you want to do it in late winter, early spring, right before the buds swell. So we're not saying that the buds are breaking, but before the buds swell, that's when you really want to um, get in there and do pruning if you want to um, maximize growth. Uh, you can, if you want to prune when the trees are dormant, you're going to reduce the likelihood of press problems, and then you also give the tree that full growing season to compartmentalize and close up all the wounds. Uh, the only other specifics in terms of timing is if you've got flowering trees, if they flower off of the current season's growth, you want to prune them in the winter. And if they flower off last season's wood, like most fruit trees do, then you want to prune just after um, bloom. Now, if you sit there because you're, you know, you're from Bakersfield and you go, well, yeah, but usually they're pruning the trees in the, in the wintertime when they're dormant. That's when they're pruning the fruit trees. You're right. That's when they do. But that's because they're really more focused on the idea of, of um, leaving room for fruit production and, and um, spacing and structure of the tree more than they're worried about the, the flowering of the tree. It's, this is this is specific to if you're if you're really worried about the the flower production of your tree if you're more fo focused on the structure and the fruiting production then you know doing it in the in the dormant season makes more sense and the last thing we're going to talk about is the idea of plant growth regulators so those are any substance that enhances or alters the growth and development processes of a plant uh, the different ways you can apply grant Plant growth regulators are you can spray it on the foliage, you can ban you can band on bark, you can apply it in the soil, and you can inject it. And I got this picture from PG&E here. The idea is this is what our tree um, would be doing, but with our growth regulator, we're able to keep the tree down here, which um, reduces our need to um, prune it so much and um, keeps our maintenance costs down, and then um, hopefully gets us to avoid problems in the future. So um, it's, there's, there's good to it. Um, there's, there's definitely good to it. There's, you know, things where, you know, now we're starting to manipulate the growth of the tree. So um, I'm still um, of the, of the belief that uh, it's more about matching up species in sight and making sure that if we have 25 foot power lines or 30 foot power lines, we just pan it plant a 20 foot tree there instead of all these other ones where we have to worry about pruning and or possibly topping or um or uh, having to use plant growth regulators i just not myself would rather plant the right tree the right species um in the right spot but also there's when you get somewhere to, and you're working the trees might already be planted and the trees might already be there. And in those cases, maybe then we have to start looking at things like plant growth regulators and other things because we can't uh, necessarily change um, change everything about the situation, right? We can't start at zero, but this this sort of thing will kind of help us out and, and help us achieve our goals if we can't, um, if we're not involved at the beginning where we're putting the right tree in the right place. And that's what I got for pruning. So hope you enjoyed that and see you next time.